An Introduction to Mishnah Torah, written by Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, the Rambam, composed in Middle Age Egypt, circa 1176 through circa 1178 CE, read by Hazan Marian Turk for darshanyeshiva.org. By our Master Moses ben Maimon of Blessed Memory, then should I not be ashamed when I have regard unto all thy commandments. Psalm 119, verse 6. All of the commandments which were given to Moses on Sinai were given together with their oral explanation, for it is said, And I will give thee the tables of stone, and the Torah and the commandment. Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. The Torah is holy writ, and the commandment its oral explanation. Moreover, he commanded us to observe the Torah by the word of the commandment. Thus, it is this commandment which is called oral Torah. The whole Torah was written by Moses our master before his demise by his own hand, and he gave a book to each and every tribe, and one book he deposited in the ark as testimony, even as it is said, Take this book of the Torah and put it by the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against thee. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. But the commandment, which is the oral explanation of the Torah, he did not reduce to writing, but he charged the elders and Joshua and the rest of all Israel concerning its observance, even as it is said, All the word which I command you, that shall ye observe to do. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. Therefore is this word of the commandment called Oral Torah. Although the Oral Torah was not reduced to writing, Moses our master gave instructions in its full scope at his tribunal seat to seventy elders, Eliezer, Phinehas, and Joshua, All the three of them received it from Moses, yet unto Joshua, because he was the disciple of Moses our master, he transmitted the oral Torah and charged him concerning its observance. Joshua likewise continued throughout his lifetime to study it orally, and many elders received it from Joshua. Eli received it from the elders and from Phinehas. Samuel received it from Eli and his tribunal. David received it from Samuel and his tribunal. Ahijah the Shilohite, who was among those who went forth out of Egypt, and a Levite, heard Moses expounding it. But as he was an infant in the days of Moses, he became the recipient from David and his tribunal. Elijah received it from Ahijah the Shilohite and his tribunal. Elisha received it from Elijah and his tribunal. Jehoiadiah the priest received it from Elisha and his tribunal. Zechariah received it from Jehoiadiah and his tribunal. Hosea received it from Zechariah and his tribunal. Amos received it from Hosea and his tribunal. Isaiah received it from Amos and his tribunal. Micah received it from Isaiah and his tribunal. Joel received it from Micah and his tribunal. Nahum received it from Joel and his tribunal. Habakkuk received it from Nahum and his tribunal. Zephaniah received it from Habakkuk and his tribunal. Jeremiah received it from Zephaniah and his tribunal. Baruch son of Neriah received it from Jeremiah and his tribunal. Ezra and his tribunal received it from Baruch son of Neriah and his tribunal. The members of Ezra's tribunal are called men of the great assembly, namely Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, Nehemiah son of Hachaliah, Mordechai, Bilshan, Zerubbabel, and many other scholars with them, totaling the number of 120 elders. The last surviving elder of among them was Simeon the Just, who was included among the 120, and received the oral Torah from all of them, and succeeded Ezra to the high priesthood. 
Antigonus of Soco and his tribunal received it from Simeon the Just and his tribunal. Yossi, son of Yoazer of Zereda, and Joseph, son of Yohanan of Jerusalem and their tribunal, received it from Antigonus and his tribunal. Joshua, son of Parachia and Nittai of Arabella and their tribunal, received it from Yossi, son of Yoazer and Joseph, son of Yohanan and their tribunal. Judah, son of Tobai, and Simeon, son of Shetach, and their tribunal, received it from Joshua, son of Parachia, and Nittai of Arabella, and their tribunal. Shemaiah and Abtalion, the just proselytes, and their tribunal, received it from Judah and Simeon, and their tribunal. Hillel and Shemai and their tribunal, received it from Shemaiah and Abtalion, and their tribunal. Rabin, Yohanan, son of Zakai, and Simeon, son of Hillel the Elder, received it from Hillel and Shammai and their tribunals. Rabin, Yohanan, son of Zakai, had five disciples who were the greatest among the scholars to receive it from him. They are Rabbi Eliezer the Great, Rabbi Joshua, Rabbi Yossi the Priest, Rabbi Simeon, son of Nathaniel, and Rabbi Eliezer, son of Arach. Rabbi Akiba, son of Joseph, received it from Rabbi Eliezer the Great, and his father Joseph was a just proselyte. Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Meir, son of the just proselyte, received it from Rabbi Akiba. Rabbi Meir and his associates, however, received it also from Rabbi Ishmael. These are the names of Rabbi Meir's associates. Rabbi Judah, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Simeon, Rabbi Nehemiah, Rabbi Eliezer, son of Shemua, Rabbi Yohanan HaSandler, Simeon, son of Azai, and Hananajah, son of Teradian. The associates of Rabbi Akiba also received it from Rabbi Eliezer the Great. The associates of Rabbi Akiba are Rabbi Tarfon, master of Yossi the Galilean, Simeon, son of Eliezer, and Yohanan, son of Nuri. Rabin Gamliel the Elder received it from Simeon, son of Hillel the Elder. His son, Simeon, received it from him. From him, his son Rabin Gamliel received it. From him, his son Rabin Simeon received it. And Judah, the son of this Rabin Simeon, is he who is called our holy master, and he received it from his father, and from Eliezer, son of Shemua, and from Rabbi Simon, his associates. Our holy master compiled the Mishnah. From the days of Moses, our master, till our holy master, no textbook of the oral Torah for public instruction had been issued, the practice theretofore being for the president of a tribunal or a prophet who flourished in a given generation to keep privately written memoranda of his master's oral teachings, out of which he, in turn, instructed the public orally. Like practice was resorted to by each and every individual scholar to write down, according to his ability of understanding, the exposition on the Torah and its laws as he heard it. So was also the practice in preserving new acts in each and every generation, which were not based on tradition, but upon one of the thirteen hermeneutical rules to which the great tribunal had assented. This procedure was followed continuously until the advent of our holy master, and he collected all traditional precedents, judicial pronouncements, expositions, and explanations, whether they were traditionally attributed to Moses our master, or whether they were so instructed by the tribunals in each and every generation, the scope of which embraced the whole Torah, and from it all he compiled the book of the Mishnah, out of which he gave public instruction to scholars, and its fame reached to all Israel, and written copies of it were made universally, and its circulation reached everywhere, so that the oral Torah be not forgotten from the midst of Israel. But why did our holy master thus, and did not leave the matter as it was heretofore? Because he observed that the number of students continued to decrease, whereas the volume of oppression continued to increase with renewed strength, 
that the Roman Empire continued to spread out its boundaries in the world and conquer, whereas Israel continued to drift aimlessly and follow extremes, he, therefore, compiled one book, a handy volume for all, so that they may study it even in haste and not forget it. And his whole lifetime he sat together with the members of his tribunal and gave public instruction in the Mishnah. And these are the great scholars who were members of our holy master's tribunal and who received it from him, Simon and Gamliel his sons, Rabbi Aphos, Rabbi Hanina son of Hama, Rabbi Hia, Rab, Rabbi Yanai, Bar Kopara, Samuel, Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Hoshaya. They were the principal scholars who received it from him, but along with them were thousands, even tens of thousands, of among the rest of his contemporary scholars. Although all of these eleven scholars received it from our holy master and regularly attended his lectures, Rabbi Yochanan was then in his minority and thereafter became the disciple of Rabbi Yenai, from whom he received the oral Torah. So did Rab receive it from Rabbi Yenai, but Samuel received it from Hanina, son of Hama. Rab compiled the Sifra and Sifre to elucidate and proclaim the principles of the Mishnah. Rabbi Hia compiled the Tosefta to elucidate the treatises of the Mishnah. Rabbi Hoshaya and Bar Kopara compiled the Brightot to elucidate the texts of the Mishnah and Rabbi Yochanan compiled the Jerusalemian Talmud in Eretz Yisrael close to the 3rd century after the destruction of the Second Temple. Among the principal scholars who received the oral Torah from Rab and Samuel were Rab Huna, Rab Judah, Rab Nachman, and Rab Kahana, and among the principal scholars who received it from Rabbi Yochanan were Rabbi Bar Barhana, Rab Ami, Rab Asi, Rab Dimi, and Rab Abin. Among the scholars who received it from Rab Huna and Rab Judah were Rabba and Rab Joseph. Among the scholars who received it from Rabba and Rab Joseph were Abaya and Rabba, yet both of them received it also from Rab Nachman. Among the scholars who received it from Rabba were Rab Ashi and Rabina, and Mar the son of Rab Ashi received it from his father and from Rabina. Consequently, there are 40 intervening generations from Rab Ashi till Moses our master, peace be to him, namely, 1. Rab Ashi received the oral Torah from Raba, 2. Raba from Raba, 3. Raba from Rab Huna, 4. Rab Huna from Rabbi Yochanan and from Rab and Samuel, 5. Rabbi Yochanan and Rab and Samuel from our holy master, 6. Our holy master from Rabbi Simeon his father, 7. Rabbi Simeon from his father Rabin Gamliel, 8. Rabin Gamliel from his father Rabin Simeon, 9. Rabin Simeon from his father Rabin Gamliel the elder, 10. Rabin Gamliel the elder from his father Rabin Simeon, 11. Rabin Simeon from his father Hillel and from Shammai, 12. Hillel and Shammai from Shemaiah and Abtalion, 13. Shemaiah and Abtalion from Judah and Simeon, 14. Judah and Simeon from Joshua son of Parachia and Nittai of Arbela, 15. Joshua and Nittai from Yossi son of Yoezer and Joseph son of Yochanan, 16. Yossi son of Yoezer and Joseph son of Yochanan from Antigonus, 17. Antigonus from Simeon the Just, 18. Simeon the Just from Ezra, 19. Ezra from Baruch, 20. Baruch from Jeremiah, 21. Jeremiah from Zephaniah, 22. Zephaniah from Habakkuk, 23. Habakkuk from Nahum, 24. Nahum from Joel, 25. Joel from Micah, 26. Micah from Isaiah, 27. 
Isaiah from Amos, 28, Amos from Hosea, 29, Hosea from Zechariah, 30, Zechariah from Jehoiadiah, 31, Jehoiadiah from Elisha, 32, Elisha from Elijah, 33, Elijah from Ahijah, 34, Ahijah from David, 35, David from Samuel, 36, Samuel from Eli, 37, Eli from Phineas, 38, Phineas from Joshua, 39, Joshua from Moses our master, 40, Moses our master from the word of Almighty. Thus it is established that all of them received it from the Lord God of Israel. All of the here and above named scholars were the greatest men in their respective generations. Some were heads of schools, others exilarchs, and still others heads of the great Sanhedrin, and with them were their contemporaries in each and every generation, numbering in the thousands, even tens of thousands who heard the oral Torah being expounded together with them or received it from them. Rabina and Rab Ashi flourished at the close of the era of Talmudic scholars. Rab Ashi is he who compiled the Babylonian Talmud in the land of Shinar, about a century after Rabbi Yochanan compiled the Jerusalemian Talmud. The scope of both Talmudic works comprises an exposition defining the text of the Mishnah, elucidatory commentaries upon its complexities, and a survey of the legal precedents established by the succeeding tribunals during the intervening period between our Holy Master and the compilation of the Talmud. And, out of both Talmudic works, the Tosefta, Sifra, Sifre, and Editions, from it all is derived what is forbidden and what is permitted, what is polluted and what is clean, what is guilt and what is innocence, what is disqualified and what is fit, all as it was transmitted orally from man to man, from the mouth of Moses our Master, even from Sinai. Therefrom are also derived the edicta issued by the scholars and prophets in each and every generation to safeguard the Torah itself, as they heard it clearly from Moses, saying, Therefore shall ye keep my charge, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 30, which means, Build a fence around my guard. Likewise are the customs and bylaws, which were inaugurated and enacted in each and every generation, by authority of the tribunal of a given generation derived therefrom. Moreover, it is forbidden to deviate from them, even as it is said, Thou shalt not turn aside from the sentence which they shall declare unto thee, to the right hand, nor to the left. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 11. Similarly are derived therefrom such laws and judicial pronouncements otherwise not accredited by tradition to Moses, but legislated by a tribunal of a given generation upon authority of the rules by which the Torah is expounded, and were passed upon their merits by the elders who decided that such should be the law. The entire scope of it all, extending from the days of Moses even to his day, Rab Ashi compiled. In addition, the scholars of the Mishnaic period compiled diverse works of exegesis on the text of the Torah. Rabbi Hoshaya, a disciple of our Holy Master, compiled an exegetical work on the book of Genesis. Rabbi Ishmael compiled a work of commentaries extending from Exodus till the end of the Torah. This work is called Mehilta. Rabbi Akiba, too, compiled a Mehilta, and other scholars, in a later period, compiled Midrashic literature but all of those were edited prior to the compilation of the Babylonian Talmud. Consequently, Rabina and Rab Ashi and their associates were the last of the great scholars in Israel who edited the Oral Torah, issued edicts, enacted statutes and established customs, and their edicts, statutes, and customs were universally accepted by Israel in all the places of their habitation. After the tribunal of Rab Ashi, who compiled the Talmud, which was completed in the days of his son, 
The extent of Israel's dispersion throughout the lands became more general, its extreme points reaching out to distant isles, in the midst of which universal unrest became alarming, making the highways unsafe on account of military operations, as a result of which the study of the Torah was neglected and the sons of Israel ceased flocking to their schools in the thousands and in the tens of thousands as theretofore, save only the gathering of a remnant few who ever hear the call of God in each and every city and in each and every country, and study the Torah and understand all the works of the scholars, and learn to know therefrom the path of the law as it is. Thus, every tribunal, founded during the post-Talmudic era in each and every country which issued edicts or enacted statutes or established customs, either for the inhabitants of its own country alone or for the inhabitants of many countries, did not have its authority extended throughout all Israel because of the great distances between their habitations and the unsafe condition of the highways. Moreover, as the tribunal of a given state consisted of individual scholars only, for the great tribunal of 71 had ceased to be many years before the compilation of the Talmud, the people of one state could therefore not be forced to inaugurate the custom of another state. Neither could one tribunal be told to issue edicts similar to the edicts issued by another tribunal for its own state. Likewise, if one of the Gaonim instructed concerning a given law in a particular way, and it became clear to another tribunal which rose up after him that such was not the way of the law according to the text of the Talmud, the first one is not supported, but the one whose interpretation is based upon sound reasoning, whether he be the first one or the last one. These rules apply only to laws edicts, statutes, and customs which were inaugurated during the post-Talmudic era, but all matters named in the Babylonian Talmud itself are mandatory upon all Israel to follow, and each and every community and each and every state must be forced to inaugurate the customs which were promulgated by the Talmudic scholars to proclaim their edicts and to obey their statutes, because to all such matters so named in the Talmud All Israel assented. Moreover, those scholars who enacted statutes, issued edicts, inaugurated customs, or made judicial pronouncements and instructed that such was the law, constituted all, or a majority, of the scholars in Israel, and they were the recipients of the traditional interpretation of the precepts of the whole Torah, generation after generation, even unto Moses our master, peace be unto him. All of the scholars who rose up after the compilation of the Talmud and builded upon it, thereby gaining fame for their scholarship, are called Gaonim. All the Gaonim who flourished in Eretz Yisrael, in the land of Shinar, in Spain and in France, studied searchingly the path of the Talmud and brought to light its hidden mysteries and clarified its treatises, for its path is an extremely deep path. Moreover, being written in Aramaic, blended with other languages, a vernacular understood by the inhabitants of Shinar when the Talmud was compiled, whereas in other places, and even in Shinar during the period of the Gaonim, no man understood that language unless he received special instructions therein. In addition, the people of each and every city propounded many questions to their contemporary Gaonim for the elucidation of impenetrable texts in the Talmud, to whom the latter responded according to their wisdom, and such interrogators collected the responsa in book form, out of which they gained understanding. The Gaonim in each and every generation compiled also exegetical works on the Talmud, some of among them interpreted particular laws of among others particular chapters which had been the subject of inquiry in his days, and of among still others, whole tractates and orders. They also compiled treatises on judicial decisions concerning that which is forbidden or permitted, guilt or innocence, matters which were the need of the hour, so as to keep in touch with education, 
even he who is not capable of penetrating the depths of the Talmud. Of such was the godly work of the Gaonim in Israel from the close of the Talmud even till this time, which is in the eighth year after the eleventh century since the destruction of the second temple, and which is also the year 4,937 since the creation of the world. In this age, with afflictions mightily intensified, the pressure of the hour weighing heavily upon everybody, when the wisdom of our wise did perish, and the prudence of our prudent was hid, all commentaries, treatises, and responsa, which the Gaonim compiled and considered by them as a clear text, are perplexities in our day, and only a select few comprehend the subject matter thereof, not to speak of the Talmud itself, both the Babylonian and the Jerusalemian, the Sifra, Sifre, and Tosefta, which require a broad understanding, a soul endowed with wisdom and lengthy reflection, when after one may find the right path therein, to ascertain the things which are forbidden and the things which are permitted, or to fathom the how and why of the other laws of the Torah. Therefore have I, Moses, son of Maimon, of Spain, girded up my loins, and, supporting myself upon the rock, blessed be he, made a comprehensive study of all those books and minded myself to construct out of all these compilations a clear summary on the subject of that which is forbidden or permitted, defiled or clean, along with the other laws of the Torah, the whole scope in pure language and concise style, so that the oral Torah be entirely methodical in the mouth of everybody, without query and without repartee, without the contentious thus of one and such of another, but clear text, cohesive, correct, in harmony with the law which is defined out of all these existing compilations and commentaries from the days of our holy master till now, so that all laws be open to young and old, whether they be laws concerning each and every commandment, or whether they be laws concerning matters instituted by scholars and prophets. The main object of the matter being that no man shall have a need of any other compilation in the world for any law of the laws of Israel, but this compilation shall be a cyclopedia of the whole oral Torah, together with a code of the statutes, customs, and edicts, which were enacted since the days of Moses our master until the close of the Talmud, even as they were interpreted for us by the Gaonim in all their compilations which were compiled by them since the Talmudic era. Therefore have I named this compilation Mishnah Torah, for when one studies holy writ first and thereafter reads this work, he obtains herefrom a complete knowledge of the oral Torah having no need to read any other book in between them. I have also minded myself to divide this work in treatises, each treatise comprising a given subject. The treatises were subdivided into chapters, and the chapters into small sections, so that it may serve as an index suitable to memorize it by heart. The range of the treatises of each and every subject varies, some embrace only the laws of a single commandment, as, for example, a commandment around which much traditional matter was constructed, which is in reality a subject by itself. Other treatises embrace the laws of many commandments, if they are commandments concerning one subject, because the division of this compilation is according to subjects, not according to the number of commandments, as it appears plainly to the reader. The number of the commandments of the Torah, which are established for all generations, is 613, of which 248 are mandatory, a numerical comparison to the members in a human body, and 365 prohibitive, a numerical comparison to the days of the solar year. Mm-hmm.